Hey there, this is going to be a draw with me sketching session. I'm going to fold in a few technical drawing and constructive anatomy tips and explanations into this one though, because we're going to be drawing a little bit more of a complicated little fantasy scene, something like that. And before I do that, let's check out some awesome art from around the internet that I came across this morning. All right, welcome to The Drawing Codex. My name's Tim McBurney. I've been a professional working artist for over 20 years. And on this channel, we're all about drawing cool stuff from our imagination, embracing the challenge of drawing and mastering the craft of line and color illustration. All right, so this one is for Friday, the 2nd of September, 2022. And I'm just checking out ArtStation. This is what the front page looks like here on the trending section. And the first thing that I saw was this kind of awesome spaceship sort of concept development style imagery from Paul Chatterson. Um, I've actually taken, um, you know, one of his sort of uh, Gumroad style courses, um, you know, on sort of doing a lot of this sort of spaceship stuff. It was really, really cool and helpful. Totally recommend, um, you know, his sort of teaching if you want to learn how to do this kind of thing. Uh, but yeah, I think he's so, so good at doing this and just the sense of scale and all the detail. This is why, you know, to a certain degree, um, you know, I think 3D has taken over when it comes to doing a lot of sort of conceptual design for science fiction spaceships and, and things like this that require scale. Not to say that drawing doesn't, you know, play a big part in the process to a certain degree, but yeah, it really does just just seems that this kind of wins in terms of effectiveness which is not to say that you can't you know draw science fiction stuff for comics uh, etc again that's something i'm sort of doing at the moment but yeah for concept design um yeah this is like really really helpful and awesome i think it, it often makes like much much better products in the end um second thing i saw was this one uh by uh Ki meng and again, I just thought it was a really good example of something I've sort of talked about on the channel a little bit. We can see the, the process here, um, which is just that, you know, often I think if you're trying to create a scene, just start by, you know, and, and, and you're a character artist, right? Just start by, you know, trying to create more of like an abstract composition. So it's like character plus some stuff to try and make it look interesting. I think that's one of the best ways to kind of practice composition, right? Um, and uh, which is not to say that, you know, um, uh, the, the artist here can't, you know, do like scenes and stuff like that. But it's often just a really cool example of something that has that kind of splash screen art feel, lots of energy. And, and it's really worth looking at these things to see what people are doing to give it that energy. You know, um, it is often this kind of, you know, nice, or, you know, having a few of these little um, sort of objects and props that sort of help um, show depth, show motion. And yeah, really, really awesome job of, of doing all of that and super cool to see the process there. The next thing I saw was this, which just looked like a cool castle giant fortress thing, which again is uh, if you've you know listened to me for a while, you know, I'm sort of always interested in that kind of stuff. Anything that sort of gets me in the mood for drawing some sort of fantasy environment, sort of landscape stuff, even though I don't often draw you know, just the environments. It's it's often seeing the environment that, that makes me feel like kind of drawing fantasy stuff. So I'm always sort of looking at that. I think these clouds are just especially nicely sort of done in the background. It kind of just makes it, um, uh, again, this one by uh, Alarico. And yeah, just cool. Nice, clean, sort of simple style. Super inspiring. Again, that nice sort of blue-green color palette feels fresh feels like adventure the next thing i saw was this thing which just looked really sort of cool and fun great example of awesome shape design and also you know imagery that is you know just kind of like abstract right in terms of you know uh what's going on but but still something that has a lot of impact right um yeah but just super cool application i think it's like actual sort of oil painted this one by uh, edward uh delandry and yeah just awesome uh again anything that kind of just reminds me how important different aspects of art are um, i really enjoy doing that before i sort of get to sketch because it gives me something to kind of focus on right um although again like not not i, I don't want to get too sort of sidetracked by the awesome stuff other people are doing 
but yeah, I think this was a really good example of cool sort of abstract shape design and, and just something that kind of feels fun. The next thing I saw was this just quick set of like fun character designs by Yan Liang. And yeah, just sort of fun. Again, I feel like there's just a really good sort of nice sense of balance, different shapes here. Um, they're all kind of like interesting, not quite sure exactly sort of what's going on, but there is sort of some logic to it, right? If you really sort of go in there and, you know, have a closer look, but yeah, just fun character designs. And again, you know, just, uh, reminds me, you know, how much fun you can have and how much, you know, creative you can be just drawing simple character. The next thing I saw was this awesome rat by Bjorn Hurry. Uh, I remember him from, you know, forums back in the day way way back um and yeah he's gotten really really good at sort of painting and you know getting all of that detail happening it just looks awesome uh, i think this is actually sort of promoting his kickstarter for a book um that he's got going at the moment so check that if if that's sort of interesting um yeah but no this looks awesome yeah i'll go check it out because yeah i just remember this art from ages ago and it just keeps getting better and better um, and yeah, I think also like just a really good mix of an artist who's kind of got a lot of character and also like a lot of detail and, and a real sort of painterliness to things. You know, I think that's often like a real sort of challenge to get that mix right. Um, great rendering, great character, great sense of like fun and drawing. So yeah, awesome to see. The next thing I saw was these dwarven designs, which again, are just sort of interesting to me sort of personally, because um, again, you know, I'm, I'm always sort of trying to think about, you know, different sort of shape design sort of things and how other people handle these kind of basic fantasy design tropes. Um, I think you can, you know, push your skills quite a bit as a concept designer by just trying to sort of, you know, do a little bit of a new take on really, really sort of old, comfortable fantasy stereotypes, because it forces you to both think about what is core to that kind of motif and also how to sort of just push it and make it a little bit fresh. And, you know, it's often that exact sort of mix of, of skills and things that you really need when you're tackling a lot of these design jobs. So, yeah, I thought this looked sort of awesome and it was a really sort of good example of that. And yeah, again, awesome, great that all the process is being shared. And yeah, you can really sort of see how a lot of those sort of sketches were developed and again, how it sort of came to rest in its final form. But yeah, nice design work. Again, sort of challenging to make uh, interesting, you know, dwarves and elves and, the, and those kind of things. Um, you know, even though it seems like, you know, a lot of those things are stereotypical, um, putting a little spin on it is, is quite a challenge. This one was done by Evan uh, Zhang. And the last thing I saw was this, which again, just made me want to draw sort of science fiction bikes. Um, again, by uh, Jia Wel Sun Zhao. Uh, again, pronunciation is terrible. My apologies. Um, but yeah, I just thought this was fun. Um, but also a good example of how, you know, often I'll just see something like this and, and I'll just want to like throw all my plans out the window and just go draw some sort of sci-fi bikes, which I might do next time, but maybe not this time. Um, yeah, so again, important not to get too sidetracked, but yeah, I thought this was just a fun little design and cool sort of painted background and stuff, yeah. Um, but anyway, let's jump over to the drawing table and get started sketching. All right, here we are at the drawing table. So for today's sketching, I'm gonna be using some matte black wings, a Faber-Castell kneadable eraser. Again, I think it came in this little box originally, but uh, as I've said before, I think most of the brands are the same. In terms of what we're drawing on, I'm drawing on some Strathmore 400 series. It's kind of, uh, you know, heavyweight paper. It's smooth surface, again, about 130 GSM. So it's quite a nice sort of paper. You, you can hack away at it a little bit. It's obviously not a Bristol board or anything like that, but it does pretty well. And I think what I'm gonna try and do, if I can sort of get this back, these were the sketches I did in the last art ritual session. And uh, I think there was a couple of questions like, you know, how do you handle the transition from, you know, like this to, you know, like a larger image? How do we sort of make sure that that, you know, kind of goes relatively smoothly? Now, obviously, you know, at some point I'll, I'll, I'll do, happy to do some sort of, you know, bigger sort of illustrations here. You know, I, I reckon to probably finish one of these things off, probably looking at, you know, minimum two to three hours of kind of, you know, really sort of going through, figuring it all out. 
don't really have time for that today. But I thought it might be cool to, again, just sort of maybe draw character plus um, sort of writer beast um, thing and, you know, deal with some of the drawing problems and, you know, some of this, the general issues that you would have taking a little thumbnail and sort of blowing it up and, you know, just making sure we're controlling some of that detail. So that's kind of the plan that we're going to deal with today. Now, this is obviously just pencil drawing, right? But, uh, you know, normal, you know, if, if you've sort of seen some of the, the work that I do, um, you know that most of it that I do professionally is actually, you know, digital. So it's all, you know, in Photoshop. And uh, if you want to, you know, learn a little bit more about how I do this, you can check out my free quick start guide, which is aimed to get you up and running quickly in Photoshop with the line and color style, which is, again, the style and the technique and the process that I use to create most of my professional work. And in that quick start guide, you'll get my advice for going from thumbnail to finish in Photoshop and all of the sort of brushes and techniques and, and, and general sort of stuff that I use in Photoshop to get my work done day to day. So the link for that will be in the description. It's free. Go check it out. But for now, let's uh, let's jump in and, and get started. So I actually did a little um, sketch for this, uh, like sort of what I had planned. Um, and uh, uh, I was doing it just now and, and I realized that nothing was recording. So, um, yeah, I ended up, uh, you know, uh, luckily I sort of caught it and uh, didn't go any further. But this is the basic plan. So what I was saying in that, you know, just previously was that, you know, you, you don't often need a fancy thumbnail, right? So those thumbnails I was just showing are like, uh, they're, they're really there for to kind of, for me to remember what the drawing is like, right? So, you know, I, I've got thumbnail little sketches like that in sketchbooks that I did, uh, you know, ages ago. Let me just go and see if I can find some to kind of show you what I'm talking about. All right, so I found a little one. And this is a good example because it's also a tiny little sort of sketchbook. Um, but, you know, this is what I, I'd often be sort of playing around with, right? And I would just be sort of doodling little ideas for scenes. And I think you can actually see some of these sort of ended up getting made as, um, you know, sort of larger illustrations, playing around with sort of comic book pages, things like that. Um, and... Uh, yeah, you know, so I often have a little sketchbook like this. Uh, here we go. So, you know, this little thumbnail here is actually, you know, one that I use to make a, a, a larger um, illustration from. Uh, I think I actually drew that in pencil as well. I'll see if I can sort of flash it on the screen so you can sort of check it out. But, yeah, you know, I'll, I'll often be sort of doing little thumbnails like this. And the thing is, you know, I can come back to this book, you know, that I think if I'm sort of looking at some of the stuff that was in there, um, you know, that was from 2015, 2016. Um, I think that I was sort of doing that right. And I can just go back to those thumbnails and be like, wow, you know, I kind of remember the scene that I was doing and it's there. And, and I can sort of almost just take those thumbnails and, and start working them up. This is obviously just a, a mess, right? <laughs> like this is not that. So this is where, again, what I'm doing is I'm taking like one or two minutes before I start an image to, to, to mostly think about tangents. Right. So I had this idea that, again, the basic idea is this this character has this kind of arch, right? It's it's like this lizard thing and it, it sort of has. Right. Right, it's sort of like this. Well, it has this kind of arch in its back, just because it looks cool. And the the basic idea was like, well, if we put the character in there, it kind of feels fun. Um, so that's kind of what I wanted to do here. Now, the problem is, and the trick is, to just make sure we we watch all our tangents. I.e., you know how far does the head kind of wrap around and go in front of the character? Where does the character's head sit in relation to the arch that is there, right? And, you know, how big does that mean the character is? Can I see things like the, the feet over here, right? Just where is that ground plane? And, 
you know, if I sort of really just think about that, it, it allows me to kind of start to think about those problems as I go in. This is going to be less useful later on, but just for sort of now, if I'm not, uh, again, you know, transferring anything or doing a thumbnail, this is often um, all we need. So, you know, I'm just going to sort of prop that up and, and have it as a little reference that, that I can sort of go back to. And uh, again, you know, the idea is we're, we're probably going to, you know, try and sort of fill this page. Um, so, you know, when, I, when I'm doing this, again, you know, a big part of what I'm, I'm going to do is, is go really faint, which is a problem um, because it's sort of hard to see. But yeah, um, well that's... That's all we've sort of got for the moment, but I'll, I'll try and get through it sort of quickly, right? And just sort of try and think about where all these different sort of elements go. And the goal is to, you know, use up as much of the page as possible and think about where that ground plane is. So I've got a really kind of rambly style here in terms of the, the sketching. And, uh, you know, th this works quite well with, with, a, with a black wing like this because, you know, I, I'm, I'm not really even touching it. I'm, I'm just kind of flowing around. You see I've got my sort of more um, artistic sort of grip there. I think someone um, asked in the comments, like, why don't I have one of those really long atelier style um, sharpenings to the pencil? And the reality is, uh, the answer to that is, uh, I don't know, maybe I'll try it out. I, um, I, I'm actually a bit of uh, an amateur when it comes to, you know, dealing with traditional pencils, because, uh, you know, for, for most of my Korea, I, I would use, you know, just a mechanical pencil to draw all my comics and stuff because it's more reliable. And as I've often said, it's only since doing the, the, the channel that I've had to, um, you know, think about something different. And mostly because, again, like this, people will leave comments saying like, hey, dummy, uh, you know, you, I can't even see the, the, you know, can't even see the lines because they're so faint. And the reality is it's like, well, that should be a really good point that you should pay attention to because... That is a major part of, you know, getting your sort of professional technique down is to make sure you don't go and rough up the page like a like a crazy person, you know. You you want to be kind of subtle with it in, in the first instance. Um, yeah, but uh, anyway, I digress. I have uh, have gone with these sort of black wings and, and I've actually found it kind of, yeah, kind of works pretty well. So again, just replicating that sort of general idea. Boom. And yeah, these these are the kind of lines that we can easily we can easily get rid of later on. So just trying to find that space. And again, you know, once I once I kind of find that space, then it allows me to yeah, sort of adjust things a little bit. And think about where this tail is going to go. Again, we could just kind of have it go over here. That might be cool. Again, showing the depth. Well, so yeah, the, the the goal here is to not put down any any lines that are going to cause us trouble. I think that sort of pelvis back there needs to go back and up a little bit. And, um, you know, I, I, I think like making sure that, you know, you know, you have the right level of looseness is, is kind of key here because, you know, the, the more you practice having a nice loose touch, the easier I think, uh, you know, just sort of diving into these things can be. All right, so I kind of need to sort of kind of need this to be something right something like this so a big part of you know the, the way that I'm drawing in general um, you know and the reason I sort of mentioned in the introduction that you know we'll fold a few sort of constructive anatomy things into this is that you know the, the way I handle these drawings is actually with a lot of draw through with a lot of sort of constructive anatomy theory right it, it, it actually has a little bit more in common with you know the way that 
people would draw you know cars or do industrial design you know i'm often thinking about where's the ground plane where's the center line let's draw through right Let, let's find these different sort of points and, and and that is just sort of something that to me just seems natural um and i think the the real you know the the, the real difference that for me personally again not being prescriptive but for me the thing that this has done is just allowed me to kind of work on that drawing foundation and once you do that right once you kind of see the connection between people and cars and all that kind of stuff then the the idea of you know the the fact for me is that there's there's no real difference between drawing this thing drawing a bike drawing a spaceship drawing a person you're drawing flowers it's all the same right it's all about just dissecting form understanding the form language being able to draw you know all of that form you know no, no matter what it is you know and, and then everything is just the same drawing problem right it's there's no difference between people or cars or whatever it's it's the same stuff to to me again once you kind of you know put put the put the once i put the time into that foundation that that was kind of you know the the thing that i got out of it right And uh, again, it would be good to get some reference for this guy. Just make sure I'm sort of drawing all of those things properly. So let me grab my iPad and I'll see if I can do that. All right, here we are. So this is the thing that I'm sort of normally referencing. This is the, you know, the time I really sort of paid attention to that. And yeah, in, in this case, you can kind of see, um, you know, like where maybe I, I could put a little bit more kind of mass into things maybe think a little bit more analytically about what I'm doing, find some of those cross sections and uh, yeah, just think about it. And, uh, you know, as, as I always say, you know, like really thinking about, right, so that's where the bone is going to go. Boom, boom, boom. Really, you know, thinking about how long it takes to, you know, get a good design happening you know, to, to, to really kind of like figure it out, figure out how it works. It does take a while. That's this kind of right thing there. All right, we've got, again, I want this just to be straight, I think. And then it sort of goes up. So it could go, actually, let's make that, All right, go sort of down. And that's going to come over sort of there. Again, it should probably have a little bit more of a curve to it. Yeah, like figuring out the design and, you know, like really having it nailed, really having it sort of dialed in, um, you know, is, is its own challenge. And, uh, you know, it takes a while. So... You know, even if I sort of drawn this character quite a few times, I, I've probably gotten better at drawing it smaller. And now that we're actually here, you know, I got to think a little bit more detailed about what's actually going on there. And and this is often the difference, right? It's like, what's the difference between doing the thumbnail and uh, and doing this? So I'm just going to put this up over here. So I can kind of reference it. Um, yeah, like what what's what's the difference between doing this small and doing it big? Well, it, it's mostly secondary form, right? Like that's that's really the the big sort of thing that that's that's going to change. Secondary form is just all of those kind of like smaller muscles, right? It's all of those kind of small things that, you know, are going to need to be there. So at the moment, I'm, I'm actually drawing pretty, like, two-dimensionally. You know, I'm really thinking about contours and, and shapes. And the reason for that is that in many cases... That's that's like the, the major sort of flow I'm I'm trying to find, and I'll have different stages with the drawing in terms of you know like how 
how long I'm I'm gonna focus on. Find a few cro contours. Yeah, when when I'm focusing on the shapes, right? Just making sure those are kind of right. I think that gets really sort of thin at the end. Maybe it could kind of go out like that. Um, again, sort of just trying to sell that depth, right? So we're gonna have shadow, right, under there, right, boom. Shadow under there, and this tracks round, right? Let's take that down. Again, I'm just drawing the shadow for this thing on the ground. And these these concepts are, are not just there for the shadow, but th this will kind of help me understand what's going on with the form a little bit and it'll help me to tell the story of the form right it, it helps to tell the story of how big this thing is and and where it's going in in space to kind of have that shadow there so super important no matter what you're doing all right what do we do now let's pull this down a little bit so you can see it a little bit better so, you know, I, I would say this type of quality of, you know, sort of drawing where we've got a lot of lines going everywhere, it's all a little bit messy. This is quite common for when I'm working in this style. So now I'm going to sort of visualize where this character is, right? So let's sort of think about, you know, again, I'm just sort of drawing lines along that ground plane. Th these are not really perspective lines or anything, but, right, I know that's where on the ground this the shadow for the for the head is where is this character sitting that's the question and what do I need to have so I'm doing this before I construct right I'm thinking more about placement this is so important um, and it's this kind of stuff that when I didn't do it early on it would get me into all sorts of trouble so the question is always like where do you start and I think this is one of the most fascinating things because the, the more I sort of do this, the more I realize like the, 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 it is really dependent on each drawing. And that's why I often say when we are planning the figure and we're trying to put it in, a huge part of what you're doing is just trying to find the most effective, easiest, quickest way for you to actually plan the drawing, to put things in. And sometimes that is about you start with the figure. But more often than not, you're dealing with this type of problem. And that's why I think having control of your sort of Loomis figures or whatever sort of constructive anatomy you like is so, so important. Because in, in this way, I'm not intimidated by trying to find the proportions of the figure. But almost like, you know, the first thing for me to do is just to kind of f like find where that figure is needs to be from a tangent point of view because the most important thing here that I think will really have a, a, a nice level of quality will add quality to the drawing is a sense that all of these things are balanced and it's planned now again I'd be just be zooming through this so I'm sort of talking and, and trying to break it down and, and share my thoughts a little bit but I do think this is a really important concept and it underlines why doing all those silly you know, proportional studies is so important because again, the most, the biggest hierarchy is make sure all the tangents are looking right. That gives us a very good illustrative quality. I guess the second thing is, look, if we just place the characters where they need to be and get all of that major spacing on the ground plane sorted, then it kind of solves so many problems, right? It, it will make your drawing feel a lot more, you know, professional and polished than it perhaps is because that is a big sign that you sort of know what you're doing i can maybe mess up a lot of these drawings you know make n everything doesn't have to be as slick but if you get the fundamental proportions right it uh it, it often takes care of many many problems and it, again at that point it becomes much more like pushing something downhill than uh again pushing it uh, or, or letting it roll downhill let's say as opposed to pushing it uphill Anyway, so that is all to say, I've kind of figured out like, okay, like I need to make sure this cloak, right, hits a good tangent here. I don't want it to interfere. I want some space here. I want some nice shapes here, right? We're going to have shadow here. I, 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 want, I want there to be good sort of space, right? I want it to be, I, I don't want this cloak to sort of go out here, right? I want this clear sort of separation between the cat, the, the, um, 
again, it's like a the, the cat lizard thing. <laughs> I don't have a name for it yet. Um, yeah, like I need its nose to kind of stick out there. So there's lots of things that need to happen. And, and part of what I'm doing is processing and, and calculating that. So now, now we have what what is, again, it looks like I'm blocking it in, but I'm actually just roughing in the shapes. But now what I'm going to do is kind of say, okay, here's the top and bottom of my figure. Again, I, I sort of know here I've got like shoulders, right? This is where they're sort of sitting. I can drop down a center line or I can visualize a center line. And now, you know, I can kind of say, well, all right, what's halfway? Halfway is somewhere there. I'm going to give myself a little bit of space, right? I'm going to put the halfway point a little bit higher because it's always better to have longer legs. And again, I don't want this to extend too much. So let's put the halfway point quite high. And that's where, and again, that will work because, you know, I've got a pretty cartoony style here, right? So I can have those sort of longer legs, right? So that's where the top of, that's where the, the pelvis is, right? That's the bottom of the pelvis, right? I've got legs. And if we were to sort of drop down those lines on the side, boom, you can see I'm starting to get like a pretty good indication of like, where is everything, right? So you can see if I was just to block in and visualize well, if, if there was just some legs coming here, legs coming there, right? Maybe that's kind of the center. I'm like, oh yeah, like, you know, I, I can kind of see there's some solidarity there. And again, it's just a matter of sort of building these concepts one thing at a time. Again, draw through, you know, I can draw, draw the character's legs through this guy because I'll be erasing it. And also it's just a sketch, you know, it's not something super finished. Let's think about if there if there was some dimensionality here. That's probably where like a belt line would be. Um, not that not that that's where it would be, but that's what the ellipse would look like. Um, and then again, I do want the head to be kind of you know somewhat that big. But uh, you know, let's draw the rest of these things first and see how we go. So again, I want the torso to be kind of in here. I feel like that's kind of where it needs to be. Let's draw the center line of that torso. Um, again, just thinking, yeah, I, I feel like I, I need to just keep a pretty standard static sort of pose here. I would like to maybe turn this, right, turn this a little bit more towards us. All right, or maybe I can do it. But again, you can see that starts to move out and, oh, I'm getting close there. So that's probably the max I can go, All right? So that's kind of okay. But, you know, if the shoulders move too much, then I'll be sort of in trouble. So, again, this character is not a really sort of buff, crazy, um, sort of muscular, heroic character. So it's okay. But I certainly wouldn't want to put a backpack or anything on there. Or maybe I would. Maybe if I, maybe if I go over there, right, that'll give me some sort of overlap. Yeah, let's see. Again, happy accident. Let's see how that goes. That might end badly. So I'm pulling this down some more. Again, let's think about the the bottom ellipse of that cape somewhere along there. Boom. All right, got rib cage. So I'm doing a mix of putting clothing on. Again, whatever helps me with the character. Now, something that will help me with the character and I also like the speed at which I need to do this drawing is... Um, Make sure this guy's got his fur cape again. So I am, I am, I am creating some tangents there. But again, the goal is to sort of either cross the tangent line or don't cross the tangent line. Let's not get sort of stuck in the middle. Bump. Right. Bump. So I'm doing a mix of, as I said, structural drawing, right, Loomis, but I'm also just adding costume elements because um, that is going to help me. And sorry, I, I sort of got distracted. Yet yeah, what I'm going to do is not have the hand showing because that saves heaps of time. <laughs> kind of cheaty nonsense, but um, yeah, and I haven't really calculated where they would be. They, they might actually both be hidden here. 
So yeah, if I just kind of have them, you know, hidden by this, by this sort of cape, right? Maybe put some other bits and pieces over here to kind of, again, push that idea. Let's think about where the center of that cape would be. All right, construct the cape. So yeah, for me, everything is just technical drawing like this because it solves the problem, right? It's my, my goal is to solve the drawing problem and then get on with the, the, the fun stuff, which is, you know, drawing the stuff that sort of has character. So got maybe again some armor under there. Oh, belt. I think it's got like he's got like a big circular belt. So again, finding center, center there. He's got that kind of some sort of tunicky thing. Again, I'm gonna watch the tangent here. I either need to go below this thing or I need to go above it. Then let's roughly think about where some pants would be. And what all of this does is kind of tells me what I need to what I need to draw, what I don't need to draw. And once I've kind of figured that out, then it'll be a lot easier to um, you know, erase all of this and, and then, you know, put the focus where, you know, I think it's going to make a difference, right? All right. Let's try maybe a few other things, right? Maybe some sort of ropes or something like that to add a bit of dimensionality. And again, we've got the head, which uh, I'm just going to rough in. We're looking at it from above, right? I've got center line. Let's define the point there. Right, to find some sh cheek bones. I've I've been using this type of construction a lot more lately, which I I find quite quite useful. Again, you know, sort of drawing the this thing down here, and then drawing that. All right, boom, boom, boom eyes there and again we sort of got some hair like this but I won't bother drawing it in just yet so again you know you can start to see how you know we kind of build these things on top of each other and uh, you know all of the stuff that I'm normally talking about on the channel you know going on and on about you know let's just draw a character you know <laughs> in really boring positions and stuff again um, these these are just things I do all day, every day. Um, and, and to me, it's surprising that people, you know, manage to get good drawing in other ways. But certainly, you know, there's lots of people who just don't, you know, they don't do the, that same amount of draw through, you know, they just get really good at, you know, doing, handling it by eye. And, you know, that's, that's cool too. I, I, I just find this, this makes my life so so much easier anyway so you can see there's a couple of things happening firstly um, I'm still using this really blunt pencil which uh, again I, I find is good because it just means I, I'm not going to upset the, the page too much it just kind of works for me um, and again you can see his foot is kind of it seems to me anyway it's kind of it's creeping down you know um but I kind of like the pose, you know, I, I, I think there's a lot of stuff here that's kind of working nicely now, right? Um, again, maybe we could kind of put a, put a sword here. Okay, let's think. So I'm always just thinking about tangents, thinking about tangents. Where are the tangents? Where do I place the sword? The, 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 the way I place it is mostly focusing on you know, where it's going to look good. Again, coming through here, and what we'll have is this cloth will kind of wrap around, right? Maybe wrap around the sword, which is kind of there. Nice little detail, right? Then kind of, you know, drop down. Again, this doesn't really make sense. So it's kind of kicking out too much. But anyway, um, yeah, so just thinking like, where can it go? Can it go here? Is this going to interfere with anything? All right, I've got We've got space here, space there. Um, yeah, so, again, tricky to know where to go from here. I think what I'll do is, is, is let's move this guy down a little bit, give us a bit more space. 
there, that's looking nice. Let's think about roughing in at least what is going on up top. So what I've got is, and again, I'm, I'm thinking about the draw through. I'm, I'm not drawing the other sides of it too much, but um, you know, again, when I started out doing a lot of these things, that's exactly what I would do. Again, we're finding the, the armature sort of lines here, like the major lines that are going to be important. And then what I'm trying to do is just, this is where, again, um, you, you can get away with a lot of fudging it. Um, you know, once you sort of really start to th think a little bit more about perspective and, and get a bit more of it under your belt, I am going to... Well, all right, just sort of visualize and think about where's the horizon line. Horizon line is up here. It's above him, right? So maybe it's kind of, you know, maybe it is, horizon line is kind of here. So wh what that means is that I'm not going to get heaps of convergence on these lines. Let's move that down even more. Yeah, I'm not going to get heaps of convergence on, on these lines here. Th these are kind of flat, right? They're parallel right, to this kind of horizon line. I don't need to draw them that uh, crazy. Let's get a bit of paper so I don't start smudging everything. This is about as far as I've gotten in terms of um, not being a total uh, newbie with pencils. Is I'm like, get a bit of paper so you don't smudge it to, um, you know, within an inch of its life and, and basically ruin the whole thing. But yeah, in terms of ways to sharpen the pencil, I'm like, I, I don't know. I don't I don't <laughs> I don't know what any of that means. Um yeah, I mean using using the black wing pencils has been a, a learning experience for me. You know, having to sharpen them or just manage the 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 tip. Uh, I was just very used to not having to do that. Alright. So again same construction here right I'm sort of drawing half a toilet roll for the saddle oh and let's put a little saddle bag or something there so I think my hand is kind of let's uh I'll, I'll keep doing this I'll just see if I can get a good grip on it all right the saddle bag is there and then we've got some sort of straps from the actual saddle. We've got a thing there, a thing there. Boom, boom. Uh, or actually, maybe this one here that goes underneath. Something like that. And then we've got a bunch of saddlebag paraphernalia, which again is just good for shapes. Uh, pretty. You know, pretty cliche, I, I would say. A lot of these sort of shapes are at least typical for, you know, what I'm often doing. But, uh, yeah, just kind of helps. And then underneath all of that, we've got a sort of rug, basically, which I'm assuming is used as, like a again, like a saddle rug or a saddle blanket. All right, so that's the basic idea. I think I'm just going to make this a little bit bigger. And here we can really think about the the, the, the contour, right? Boom. And then in, right? Okay, boom. So, yeah, it's, it's, it's often this, you know, little focus on all of these little secondary details and things that will, you know, help keep everything, you know, feeling kind of detailed, right? Feeling kind of like we got it under control. Um, yeah, I mean, I, I feel like that's looking a bit big, like the whole saddle thing is looking it's looking a little bit big. I'm not sure. Let's just make this oh, a little bit thinner. A 
right just see if we can get it contained I'm gonna just get rid of this see if we can really get rid of it again that's the advantage of as I always say well, advantage of using a decent paper yeah that feels a little bit better let's make this even smaller Uh, let's put let's put some sort of blanket or thing over here as well just to make it feel a bit more lived in got some ropes and other things boom yeah cool anyway that I mean it's probably the kind of stuff that only I'm sort of paying attention to but um, you know this is what these phases are for you know we just double check we triple check um, it's really easy to just go and change stuff at this at this stage So you might as well, you know take advantage of it and uh, you know, I think that's often the that's often the thing You know, I'll, I'll just I just know um, You know the experience is, is is a matter of knowing when to kind of put a little bit more time in there or sort of You know get that right as opposed to just kind of saying eh, who cares? All right got this form here now let's see if we can find some of that form and, and get some of the spacing uh, right and here we got some sort of changing some of them seeing if I can get some spacing let's let's take this out see if I can draw this guy now again I, I could take out a lot more of what's behind there I, I could leave it I could I could do multiple passes just a lot of it is you know depends how much time you've got right like how much uh, all right, let's get a better let's get a better pencil. All right, so I'm really wanting to like rotate this to try and get some of these lines here. What's this weird? weird shape going on and all right so let's see if we can sort of match these things up so this one is kind of like that and then we've got one here like that and then one here it's a bit more like that and then he's got um, again, there's a bit of sort of form change here, All right? As this moves over, and then what are we gonna what are we gonna have here? Let's do another one, and then I think if we, oh, how many can we do there? It's probably not that many. So I'm just trying to again. This is like really this this is where just a tiny bit more planning would. Uh, save a little bit of fuss right just trying to get the, the number of sort of segments looking somewhat uh, plausible and then this line goes up here All right that line goes up there and it can be easier right to sort of put that line in because if I put that line in and now I kind of take out all of those lines that were there before Right, really kind of take that back. You can see that the, the heavier line is still persisting, right? So now if I go back in and right, have another go at that. Right, I, it's, it's a lot easier. So th there's many techniques here. Again, none of these are kind of high level <laughs> techniques, but uh, again, it's just kind of knowing how to how to handle those 
times when you you know you're going from sort of sketching to to not sketching, etc. Um, etc. Et and here we're going to have this form right kind of coming there. And and here we got like a lot of these weird sort of muscles there that don't don't really have any strong structure yet. Again, I want this to. make sense in some way. I think this one goes there. Now, again, like the, 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 this stuff is kind of irrelevant, but at, as in it, it often is, is interesting, you know, to me what I spend time on. But if I get these contours right, it actually shows a lot of the form, right? So it's, it's doing a lot of the job for me. So even though it, it's a lot of fuss to, to sort of sit there being like, hey, hang on, what, you know, how many of these things have I got? Right? Let's, let's, you know, measure them out properly, etc., etc. If, uh, you know, if you kind of get it right, then, um, whoop, then it, it does a lot of work. So, you know, I, I'm going to need to do way less kind of rendering, right? And, and fussing around because, you know, got these contours and they're doing the job anyway let's uh, let's see if we can add some of these eyes got an eye there an eye there and an eye there all right and uh, again I don't know I don't know how much time we'll, we'll sort of have to you know like polish off all the details as I said um, you know, good to think about the one, two, three read, one read, probably, you know, the, the characters sort of a secondary read, don't really need to go that much, that much further. And, you know, probably these like legs here, even though they're sort of in the foreground of the image compared to other stuff, you know, I, I, I would probably try and lose some of those edges a bit. Um, yeah, so let's, um. What I'll do is I'll just take, I'm going to use the technique or the process or the plan of kind of taking most of it back and I'm going to get rid of as many sort of construction lines as I can because I don't think we need them anymore. All right, so these lines where I'm dropping things down, we don't need that, All right? Let's get rid of everything that I know doesn't need to be there. Well, let's see if I can get rid of these. Again, it's not a Bristol board, right? You know, I can't get rid of, you know, all of these lines all together. There's still some, you know, sort of sketchiness off there. You could definitely get rid of that in Photoshop, though. All right. What else? And, uh, yeah, so that's what I was doing. So, again, taking this back. And I think this will give me, like, a pretty good ability to then just go in and do one last pass and you know really sort of you know get some some sort of finish on there so I'm just focusing on you know where I've got obvious construction lines all right there we've got some obvious construction lines some stuff overlapping that doesn't need to overlap right but you know, a lot of these sort of you know gestural lines everywhere, you know, they they, they will kind of help to, um, you know, show some motion and stuff. So you know, you, you can leave that stuff in. It, it often works pretty well. Boom, 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 boom. All right, there's some stuff there. Probably this one on this far leg is less important. All right. And this is where, again, you should probably invest in one of those brushes. I'll probably, actually, I should really just buy one of those things. Let's take this back heaps, because I'm pretty sure I don't need, pretty sure I need to do a much better job of drawing that. Yeah, let's take that back, and let's take this back. And I think once I've done that, I can just go in and do 
like a single pass. Um, again, I'm not going to get, you know, keep seeing it, but it's worth, worth remembering. I'm not going to get a super high level of polish, but that's okay. Now let's think about what's happening with this character, right? We've got this, right? Sort of like, it's almost like the, the, the lats on the creature, right? Going to sort of be coming over there. Right, and here we've got the, right, it's almost like the sort of shoulder, just indicating a, a little bit of that. And again, there's a similar sort of pattern that goes along there. All right, so again, just indicating those things. All right. in some of these claws and as I said right we can keep this stuff pretty pretty loose and here I'm gonna have again this character's sword in the background and then all of this is going to be right sort of in shadow Same thing here. Just indicating some of those and uh, that probably doesn't need to come out. Oh, doesn't need to come out that far. Again, none of this stuff really is gonna make much of a difference. I I don't think so anyway. this will sort of just give me a little bit of a grounding of the character and you know let, let me know whether that sort of idea of the the shadow is is going to work can i be doing a lot of sort of tutorial style explaining here on this one but uh, yeah no, normally a lot of this stuff would would go a lot quicker than than it sort of has been And again, we'll put, you know, we'll put some little sort of rocks and things around the place to sort of indicate. Right, that there is some sense of ground plane here. And obviously there's going to be ground plane there. I don't need or want these legs to really, you know, play a major role in anything. Mostly important to, you know, just get that kind of shape there. Uh, all right, let's let's see if we can get this head happening. Let's go with a sharper pencil. So often what I do is if the pencil is too sharp, I just kind of bang it on something until it's a little bit, little bit better. And then I'll kind of just use it for some less important stuff until, yeah, it just feels like it has an okay going into non non-verbal mode there just until it's got a, a decent sort of tip it's going to give sort of suggestive sort of eyes again it's not really looking like that same character too much let's see how we go And hair is one of those things that I just constantly don't understand why I haven't done more visual library on hair. Because, yeah, I feel like 
Uh, I'm constantly sort of struggling. All right, question is, should I try and add some, you know, I, I could try and, you know, give him some eyes, right? I'm still not sure about that. Uh, let's try it now. Let's see if we can get rid of those. Again, we, we're not going to have many chances to to redo some eyes. And I'm just going to bring this closer so I can really get in. So not sure whether those eyes are doing doing us any favors or not. Um, who knows? Hard to tell. All right, but you know we sort of got you know a lot of this. You know a lot of that's kind of sorted. Again, he has half elf ears, something which is completely different to what the character normally has. But oh well. Standard um, barbarian cloak thingy. Uh, again, you know, another one of those tropes. And it is hard to know, you know, like with those tropes, it's like, you know, I'm doing stuff that I'm always doing and it, it's not the most original. But at the same time, you know, when I look at art that, you know, people I like, you know, they're, they're, they're off, I often want them to keep doing the same thing. So it, it can be hard to tell, right? Um, yeah, in most cases, I'm just more focused on the, the, the story than all of that kind of subtler, um, you know, sort of design stuff, right? Um, especially with this type of stuff. This is just sketching. It's just meant to be warm-up sketches, right, on, on this kind of art ritual sort of show, but... Uh, yeah, you know, a lot of it just depends on what, you know, what mood I'm in, how much, uh, you know, how much drawing I've done, how easy, how fun that seems. Alright, this goes over there. Got this sword. Put some kind of thing on there. Again, a few little details on the sword. Got this thing. So it's often interesting because, you know, we, we often don't actually end up having to draw that much stuff. Again, this guy's sort of going to end up looking like, you know, he's got quite small shoulders. I'm not sure how I feel about that, but, you know, kind of calculate all that stuff. Maybe I'll give him slightly wider shoulders there. Well, see if we can drop this down a little bit. Um, yeah, you know, like we're often doing a lot of stuff in the preparation phase. The actual execution phase, you know, I don't actually draw that much of, of the character, right? It's just sort of a few little bits and pieces here and there. And we got, you know, a few little costume details, right? Got that weird chest plate thingy. Oh, oh, oh. Right, so yeah, it's it's often like very simple drawing that I'm doing, you know, I'm, I'm not doing any sort of fancy rendering on the anatomy, it, it, it's mainly just a matter of sort of finding, finding a decent sort of pose, you know, executing on that drawing a few lines here and there. It's just a matter of getting those lines in the right spot. And again, you know, I don't want don't want too much uh, interference between this character and the, the thing in the background. Because this is probably going to stay pencil, right? I can think about adding few other little bits and pieces that are more 
pencil-y. And uh, yeah, see how we go. I've also got, can think about adding some sort of shadow, right? Sort of under here. Boom. Again, just trying to texturize the ground and kind of say, you know, yep, there is something there. Getting pretty soft with this, pr pretty lazy with this sort of shading here. Again, might might regret that later on. We will see. All right. So again, not not quite sure on this face. I, I feel like it's got it's gotten like a little bit right, a little bit big. Uh, I'm just kind of trying to make it feel a little bit smaller. And again, I, I would really like to make these kind of boots a little bit sort of bigger, although I might have to go back and right, sort of take down these lines. Just want a little bit more shape, right? A little bit more sort of silhouette pop there. But yeah, you can see it's kind of starting to compete in terms of contrast. So just take that down, again, take that down. And yeah, you know, again, that's kind of working. So, you know, let's try and quickly just draw some of these things in. See if we can indicate. If you're ever kind of stuck for time, Right, and you're sort of, you know, trying to decide on, you know, those ideas like what, you know, what what should I do? Should I render this? Should I not render this? I've often found that when I'm under deadline pressure, if I just ask myself a simple question, if I had five minutes to make this, you know, as good as I could, right? Like, what is the thing that I would do? All right, we don't have hours. You got five minutes. Um, what would I do? What would I quickly be like? Oh, damn. Uh, you know, someone just said, hey, you know, you, you thought the deadline was now, but uh, was was then, and actually it's right now, you know. Uh, and you're sort of saying, uh oh, give me five minutes. Uh, I'll do the best I can. What's the best you can do in five minutes? And just sort of keep going through, right, and doing that. Um, I think that's always a good exercise to, you know, think about and, and, and deal with as an artist. What can you do in five minutes? Because it often clarifies, right? It's like you're sitting here, I'm like messing around with something and then you sort of step back and you're like, well, you know, actually if I kind of, you know, just reduce the contrast on some of these things that probably have too much contrast, right? Like that, that might be better. It's less about sort of adding and, and, and more about sort of, you know, taking away you know, prioritizing, and uh, again, you know, just sort of finish stuff, right? So, you know, some some good things that I often think, uh, you know, are good to do in that instance are to focus on the silhouettes, think about indication a little bit more, right? So get the silhouette right, and, you know, make the rest about just, you know, filling in the gaps, right? So again, I've got a lot of bits and pieces here. Got this sort of blanket. Don't need to draw it all, right? It's like, that's not what needs to be rendered. Just got these silhouettes. And if we block them in and set the level of expectation from the viewer, you know, like, hey, there's nothing back here. Don't worry, don't look here. Then, uh, you know, off, often it'll, you know, hopefully. Well, I mean, you, you let me know. It could just be like, no, Tim, that just looks like garbage. Put some stitching on the saddle there. But yeah, just clean up the silhouette. And again, here, same thing. Let's clean up the silhouette. All right, got this line here. Now I can go pretty dark on this one because it's a, you know, it's a, it's a line underneath. Going really dark on these lines is a bit of a tricky proposition. You've got to get it just right. 
But these ones down here, we can go a little bit sort of darker on. Same concept here. So not one of those basic things, right? You, you've probably heard people sort of say it before, but it is always good to remember when you're in the thick of it, you know, trying to finish a drawing or something, right? Like, which ones can I, which ones do I need to clean up, right? That's the best way I sort of think about it, right? Like, which, which ones do I need to, to get right? Which ones can... Yeah, sort of sit back and chill a little bit more. Am I gonna am I gonna regret, you know, not spending time on this? You know, that's often what I'm sort of thinking. Alright, so now we've got and I think this does right, again, let's think about you know uh, that's probably would be better left. I think this does come down here. Alright, let's do this one. Again, focus on that silhouette. Might be a little bit much, but again, we have a go at it. Can take it back. And let's think about what's happening on what's happening with those contours, because they will actually help us to really describe this form nicely. And I'm just going to indicate them over there. And got again. Not sure what's happening sort of up here. Um bom, bom, bom. See if we can draw that in. Again, normally I'd probably be trying to sort of rotate this a bit. Let's trace this round. So I'm drawing through, but not really. Put some indication of right that going back. Let's see if we can trace this. So. Again, start to indicate. Boom, boom. Right, we can focus a bit more on what's happening there. All right, see if we can get a sense of this sort of shadow here. All right, sense of this shadow here. Again, not really doing the best job of, you know, really defining that. But yeah, let's see if we can add a few bits and pieces here. So this is just sort of some indication of there's there's stuff on the ground here. Put a few things for here. Alright, put a few little shadows there. And again, it's just going to fill in right this space a little bit, make it feel a little bit less as if there's kind of nothing back here. Again, pretty, pretty, you know, simple drawing stuff. Anyway, I, I think we're I think we're pretty much done in terms of you know what we can do with this without you know spending we're at the point where that the next the next step is going to probably take just as long as, as all of these steps right been at this one for maybe about an hour which um you know is a good place to kind of leave it um, for me because especially well I guess there's different ways you could view this right mostly what I'm doing here is practicing the construction phase, right? And I'm practicing those things I was talking about in the beginning, right? The idea of placing the character, of sort of, you know, getting all those things happening. Oh, there goes my bit of paper. If you're practicing detail, then obviously that's what you want to spend your time doing, right? You you want to kind of, you know, get that right. 
Um, but uh, for me, you know, that's that's not really what I'm sort of focusing on here. And uh, you know, if I was trying to spend about um, you know an hour focusing on detail, I probably do you know similar to some of the other drawings I've done in these art ritual sessions, where you know you just take a character's face, you just take a character's torso, and you know you go to town on that. Um, but uh, again, you know, with that said, I, I'd really like to do some some much more detailed sessions for these. You know, maybe some more sort of three hour you know, fully narrated, real-time sort of illustration things, maybe dealing with sort of pencil. Uh, I've got plenty of digital ones of those, but, you know, I think uh, I think pencil is good. Uh, mostly because uh, I think you can kind of see the hand working. It's a little bit harder to do that with the Cintiq. Um, it is possible, though. I'll see if I can get that camera set up. But uh, also I like pencil because everyone has access to pencils, right? It's really sort of simple in, in the way it kind of, you know, makes makes the process really um, simple to see. You know, like there's no tricks. We're not, we're not doing anything. Um, you know, again, in this case, you know, I'm not even, not even using, you know, tricks to kind of transfer the drawing to... The page, you know, it, it, it's a matter of practicing all those things I was talking about in the beginning where, um, yeah, you know, you, you really make sure that you know, you know, where all your um, overlaps and things are going to be, right? Again, let's put a bit of sort of shading under there. And, you know, if we wanted to, if you wanted to start that extra 10%, right, just start by, all right, punching some of those shadows, right? That's at least where I would start with it. I, I don't do a lot of, you know, heavily rendered pencil stuff, but the, the, the place that I would start would be with, again, the, the intersections between where some of this form goes, right? So intersections where things are meeting, right? Try and clarify some of those silhouettes, right? Clean things up good to have also you know a really good eraser if you're going to start messing around with this all right let's push some of those shadows all right shadow shadow so you know again you can see that's the, the kind of thing i'd you know keep doing in that instance and uh you know might be might be worth playing around with that if that's something you you want to do you know keep going with your drawing Digital is really good for practicing these things and, you know, being able to, you know, take your drawing too far and then take it back. <laughs> Whereas with this, uh, you know, e even if you've got, you know, uh, if you have a real good Bristol board, you know, you can go pretty crazy and, you know, mess up your whole page and just erase it back to nothing. But with this, yeah, there's only, there's a limited amount that I can kind of mess this up and erase it and go back before the freshness that you get um, you know, from sort of keeping it sketchy, uh, you know, starts to be outweighed by, you know, the fact that, oh, you got it right, but now the, the page is kind of hacked up and a bit kind of messy. But, uh, but yeah, uh, and, uh, you know, uh, the, the other thing is that once you've sort of done a lot of that, you know, harder drawing, you know, you, you can chill out a little bit with, with this stuff, you know. So if we're just kind of adding rocks and, you know, massaging shadows and stuff it, it, it it's less likely that i'm going to mess everything up and make a huge catastrophic mistake right um that the major mistake you'll make here is just doing too much right so um going going too far with your with your sort of you know adding too many little bits and pieces uh whereas again we you want to sort of keep it pretty pretty simple and, and just work on your sort of balance right like not again just spreading these things out um but yeah i think that is it for this one actually you know what i was checking this after i finished recording it and this leg was annoying me and considering i did a whole video on how not to draw awkward feet I thought I should try and fix these and, again, talk about the process of fixing your drawing. You know what I mean? Again, if you sort of wake up the next day or something like that and, uh, again, it's not quite right. 
Um, so let's take a look at this. And, and I think one of the things that's happened here is that as, we, as I've clarified the shadow pattern of the actual creature, um, you know, I, I sort of found that the shadow pattern of this guy, I, I think is probably a little bit off. So what we should do is let's just sort of take a lot of this down, right? That's probably the, the best way to sort of think about it. And I'm going to try and re-establish the sense of a sort of circle here, right? So just defining the bottom of the ellipse. And I think that should help me to kind of find what's going on. And I think, yeah, we'll sort of see that that's going to bring down this bit a little. And let's just, with a ruler, try and see if we can establish kind of a center point. So I'm not going to draw with the ruler, right? But I am going to sort of, you know, draw a line down here. So, yeah, probably like at best it could be about here. So what this is sort of saying is, again, that this foot is, has probably drifted a little bit in. And this one has probably drifted a little bit out. So again, let's like really go back and take these guys away because I don't think they're going to be much help. And also, let's really think about what's going to happen to this shadow because I think what we'll probably find is, again, you can kind of see this foot is touching here. And now that I've defined the shadow for the creature, we can really see that the shadow for this probably needs to be something a little bit more like that. So again, to me, if I sort of check, you know, yeah, I, I feel like that's that's looking a little bit better. Just if I kind of get up and, and look at it in a more, um, you know, from a better angle. All right, so let's uh, again, you know, think about the center here. Right, where the center of that posture is. And um, again, just try and place the heel and these different elements here, which is starting to sort of drift a little bit away from where the center of the cape is and that sort of thing. So again, it might look a little bit weird. We'll see. This is why, again, the more um, sort of planning you do, the, the better. But let's draw the ball of that foot and the ball of that foot. And, yeah, you know, probably maybe that shadow will come out a little bit more. Something like that. Yeah, let's see. All right, and so, again, I'm going to sort of put these legs out a little bit. Well, that's kind of how they were. But, uh, yeah, let's just try and draw them a little bit better. So, again, at this point, I want to sort of double, triple check what's going on. And let's see if we can build in a little bit of that extra anatomy. Because, again, one, one of the, like, um, and, and not just anatomy in terms of muscle, but anatomy in terms of structure of the, the boots and those extra things. So, I'm going to put these kind of... Um, metal protector, sort of fake fantasy things on there. See what see what sort of happens. Again, um, I might try and avoid kicking out that quite so much. That's going to go in. All right, we're going to have a little bit of a a sole, right? So essentially, we we find that that first sole, and then you know we kind of draw another one on top of it. And that gives us the sort of lift. Got the lift, and I've got this going down here, and then again, I want to play around with again, the idea that that is a boot with a bit of a with a bit of a sort of bulge there. Again, maybe that might be a little bit much given the anatomy that we've got going again everything else is kind of pretty simplified so who knows all right got this so again i need to 
rotate that pencil, get us a little bit of a better edge there. Rotate, see if we can yeah, just hit that. Then all of this is going to go into shadow. Don't. So yeah, still pretty rough, right? We're we're very much at kind of the the sketch phase, but I I feel like this is this is working a little bit better. So what I'll try and do is again place in some of these little indications of grass, kind of here, and right once we've got that happening. Right, can put a few little rocks down there and then we'll cast the shadow over those rocks. And then what I'm going to try and do is use the the sort of pattern of the grass for the shading here. So the the, the sort of shadow, instead of sort of going that way, I'm, I'm going to try and use the pattern of, you know, where some grass would be to kind of help me define that. And... Uh, yeah, now we can sort of probably put a bit of shadow on those feet. And yeah, you know, again, if, if you wanted to go sort of further, you know, you could keep messing around with it, right? Keep sort of adjusting some of that shading if you wanted to sort of indicate some, some more sort of realistic rendering. But I think I'm going to sort of leave it there. Again, the face is still something where I'm like, oh, I feel like I could take a different pass at that, you know? but I won't do that in this instance. Anyway, that's all I've got for this one. Thanks for hanging out and listening and, uh, you know, drawing. Hopefully your drawing is going well. And, uh, yeah, let me know if you've got any comments or questions about this one down below. But uh, other than that, we'll catch you in the next video. Happy drawing.